we shall commence this module by discussing that how we define money. Before arriving at the meaning or definition of money, we need to understand how to define money. We can define money in the following two ways. A. The functional definition of money. B. The definition of money supply that is practical or empirical conceptually. The functional definition is basic. Unless we understand the meaning of money, we cannot proceed to having an empirical or practical definition of money supply. The meaning of money has two parts. First, what does money do? Second, what kinds of assets are recognized as money? It is obvious that first of all we require to understand what money does, only then we can know what it is. After starting this module, you shall be able to first understand how to define money, second understand the functions of money, third know the types of money, fourth appreciate different measures of money supply. The existence of money was preceded by a market system that ignored the need for money. We are referring to the barter system. In earlier times, money was not used. Instead, commodities were exchanged for commodities. This system was called the barter system. Barter is a system of exchange by which goods or services are traded for other goods or services directly without using any medium of exchange such as money. Major disadvantages of barter system. First, lack of double coincidence of wants. Barter transactions can be possible only when two persons desiring exchange of commodities should have such commodities which are mutually desirable by each other. For example, if Sita wants cloth which Gita has, then Sita should have such commodity which Gita wants. In the non-existence of such coincidence of wants, there will be no barter. And it is extremely difficult to find such people where there is coincidence of wants. Since one had to face this difficulties in barter economy, this system had to be discarded. Second, indivisibility. Another issue with barter exchange relates to exchange of such commodities which cannot be divided. For example, a person has a cow and he wants cloth, food grains and other items of consumption. Under this condition, exchange can be possible only when he finds a person who is in need of a cow and has all such commodities. But it is very complicated to come across a person like this. Similarly, this problem relates to exchange of such commodities which cannot be divided into pieces. Since in this kind of situation, a big commodity like cow cannot be divided into small pieces for making payment of goods of smaller value. Third, lack of a common measure of value. The biggest problem in the system of barter exchange was that there was a lack of common measure of value that is, there was no such commodity in lieu exchange of which all commodities could be bought and sold. In such a situation, while facilitating the exchange of a commodity, its value was to be expressed in all commodities such as one yard cloth is equal to half kilogram of potato etc. It was a very tricky proposal and made exchange practically impossible. Now, with the breakthrough of money, this complexity has been entirely eliminated. Fourth, lack of store of value. In a barter economy, the store of value could be done only in the form of commodities. However, commodities are perishable, fragile and they cannot be kept for a long time in the store. Because of this intricacy, the gathering of capital or store of value was very complicated and without the gathering of capital, economic growth could not be achieved. This is one of the reasons for the fact that as long as barter system was there, no great progress was achieved in the world anywhere. Now, 
we will discuss the meaning of money. The meaning of money can be divided into three parts. First, what is money? Second, what does money do? Third, what all does constitute money? The first two questions come finally give us the functional definition of money. We now consider the functional definition of money. Money is any object or verifiable record that is generally accepted as payment for goods and services and repayment of debts in a particular country or socio-economic context. Functional definition. The main functions of money are well known as medium of exchange, a unit of account, a store of value and occasionally in the past a standard of deferred payment. Any kind of object or verifiable record that fulfills the mentioned functions can be considered as money. Functions of money. The functions of money are as follows. First, medium of exchange. The most essential role of money is to serve as a medium of exchange or as a way means of payment. To be a successful medium or exchange, money must be commonly accepted by people in exchange for goods and services. While functioning as a medium of exchange, money benefits the society in a number of ways. A. It overcomes the inconvenience of barter system, that is, the need for double coincidence of wants by splitting the act of barter into two acts of exchange, that is, sales and purchases through money. B. It promotes transactional efficiency in exchange by facilitating the multiple exchange of goods and services with minimum effort and time. C. It promotes allocation efficiency by facilitating specialization in production and trade. D. It allows freedom of choice in the sense that a person can use his money to buy the things he desires the most. From the people who put forward the finest bargain and at a time he considers the most beneficial. Second, measure of value. Money serves as a general measure of value in terms of which the value of all goods and services is measured and expressed. By performing as a common denominator money has become a language of economic communication. It has made transactions easy and cut down the problem of measuring and comparing the prices of goods and services in the market. Prices are but values expressed in terms of money. money also acts as a unit of account. As a unit of account, it helps in creating an efficient accounting system because the values of a variety of goods and services which are physically measured in different units, example quintals, meters, liters, etc. can be added up. This makes possible the comparisons of various kinds, both over time and across regions. It provides a basis for keeping accounts, estimating national income, cost of a project, sale proceeds, profit and loss of a firm, etc. To be appropriate measure of value, the monetary units must be invariable. In other words, it must maintain a stable value. A fluctuating monetary unit creates a lot of socio-economic problems. Normally, the value of money, that is, its purchasing power, does not remain constant. It increases during periods of decreasing prices and decreases during periods of increasing prices. Third, standard of deferred payments. When money is usually accepted as a medium of exchange, and a unit of value, it obviously becomes the unit in terms of which deferred or future payments are stated. Thus, money not only facilitates current transactions being a medium of exchange, but also helps in credit transaction, that is trading present goods on credit, through its utility as a standard of deferred payments. But to become a suitable standard of deferred payments, money should preserve a constant value over a period of time if its value increases through time, that is in the times of decreasing price level. It will benefit the creditors at the cost of debtors. If its value increases, that is in the times of increasing price level, it will give advantage to the debtors 
at the cost of creditors. Fourth, store of value. Money being a unit of value and a usually adequate means of payment provides a liquid store of value as it is so effortless to spend and so trouble free to store up. By acting as a store of value, money provides safety to the individuals to meet erratic emergencies and to shell out debts that are set in terms of money. It also provides guarantee that attractive future buying opportunities can be exploited. Money as a liquid store of value facilitates its holder to purchase any other asset at any point of time. It was Keynes who first realized the liquid store value of money function and regarded money as a connection between present and future. Though it does not imply that money is the most appropriate liquid store of value, to become an appropriate store of value, money needs to have a stable value. Moving on to discuss the kinds of money. There are three types of money. Coins are metallic money. They are not full bodied but only token money. It means face value is higher than the intrinsic money metallic value of token coins. Next, currency notes. Currency notes are merely pieces of paper that have no intrinsic value of their own. All paper currency is inconvertible. Next, demand deposit. We are treating only demand deposits of banks on which checks can be drawn as money. Checking deposits play the role of means of payment in the situation when they are transferred from one source to another. Further, it is useful to distinct between first, legal tender of money or fiat money, second, non-legal tender or credit money. Token money. Token money is such money is in the nature of a token. A token is not of full value. Small coins as well as paper currency are token money. This is because the face value of the currency is more than the inbuilt or inherent value. In other words, the intrinsic value exceeds the intrinsic value. If a 1 rupee coin is melted and sold for its metal value, it may not fetch even 1 rupee. A metro rail token is not even worth 1 rupee in terms of plastic, but the face value could be up to rupees 150 depending upon how far you are traveling on the metro. Fiat money. The word fiat comes from Latin and means that it is a compulsion. Fiat money, therefore, is such a form or type of money that derives its value by government decree or law. It is different from commodity money. In other words, any type of money that is made of precious metals like gold and silver are known as representative money or commodity money. The value of the money and the underlying commodity are equal. There is full convertibility from one form into another. Then fiat money can be defined as first, officially declared money, second, legal tender money, third, stake issued money that is neither convertible nor holding a fixed value in objective terms. Fourth, intrinsically value by money that acquires value due to government laws. Gold or silver coins are representative money and there is a legal requirement that banks need to convert them into equal values in money terms. Up to a point in time, this was true of the US dollar as well. Legal tender money. Legal tender money may be limited or unlimited legal tender. Small coins including rupee 1 coins and notes are limited legal tender. It means that legally speaking, payments made beyond a certain limit, say rupees 500, cannot be made in the form of 1 rupee notes or coins. The receiver may say no to accept such a form of payment lawfully. All other types of currency are unlimited legal tender. Bank money. Demand deposits of banks are not considered as a legal tender. A payee can legally refuse to payment in demand deposit through a check and be adamant on payment in cash. 
This is because there is no guarantee that a check will be honored at the issuer's bank. Therefore, this form of money is also known as optional money. Next, we shall discuss about money supply. Measures of money supply need for accurate definition and measure of money supply arises from delivery of monetary services in an economy by a variety of financial assets like currency, saving deposits, demand deposits, time deposits, etc. Thus, it is crucial to merge the potential flows of monetary services by each of these into one or more aggregates in order to define money. The definitions of money supply forwarded by Reserve Bank of India RBI from time to time are available in the propositions of First Working Group 1961, Second Working Group 1977 and Third Working Group 1998. Money supply. Money stock or money supply is total amount of monetary assets accessible in an economy at a particular point of time. Important points about money supply. First, it is a stock concept calculated or specified at a point of time. Second, it refers to the stock of money held by the public. The term public is meant to incorporate all economic units, households, firms and institutions except the producers of money such as government and the banking system. Demanders, holder of money, public, households, corporate firms, non-bank financial institutions. Suppliers, producers, government, central and all state government. Banking system, RBI and all banks which accept demand deposits. Various measures of money supply are given as follow. M1, narrow money. M1 is equal to currency with public plus demand deposits with banking system plus other deposits with RBI. M1 is equal to currency with public plus current deposits with banking system plus demand liabilities portion of savings deposits with banking system plus other deposits with RBI. M2. M2 is equal to M1 plus time liabilities portion of savings deposit with banking system plus certificates of deposit issued by banks plus term deposits of residents with a contractual maturity of up to and including one year with the banking system excluding CDs. M2 is equal to currency with the public plus current deposits with banking system plus savings deposit with the banking system plus certificates of deposit issued by banks plus term deposits of residents with a contractual maturity up to and including one year with banking system excluding CDs plus other deposits with RBI. We have previously studied the functional definition of money. Now we require to be on familiar terms with the empirical definition of money supply. But this is not straightforward. The query of defining money supply is not straightforward. There is only one universal definition. MS is equal to CC plus DD where MS is equal to money supply. CC is equal to currency notes and coins held by public and DD is equal to demand deposits held by commercial banks. The dilemma is that the functional definition of money implies that money is the most liquid asset but on that count if we include only gold or silver coins which are most accepted form of value definition becomes very narrow. On the other hand if we include other assets then its coverage increases. The former approach is narrow but does not dilute the concept of money as liquidity. The latter approach is broad but includes assets that are increasingly illiquid. Now please remember socio-economic context. Thus the accepted definition of money or more precisely money supply will depend on the socio-economic context of each country. Therefore each country has its own definition of money supply. But there is only one definition of money, the functional definition. M3 is broad money. M3 is equal to M2 plus term deposits of residents with a contractual maturity of over one year with banking system plus call term borrowings from non-depository financial corporations by banking system. M4. 
M4 is equal to M3 plus all deposits with post office savings banks excluding national savings certificate. Brief explanation of mentioned components. Currency. A currency is the most precise use of the word refers to money in any form when in real use or circulation as a medium of exchange, particularly circulating paper money. This use is the same with bank notes or sometimes with bank notes plus coins, that is the physical tokens used for money by a government. Demand deposits comprises of current account deposits and demand deposit portion of savings deposits all held by public. In commercial banks, demand deposit, bank money or scriptural money are held in demand deposit accounts. These account balances are typically considered money and shape the larger part of the narrowly defined money supply of a country. Other deposits with RBI are its deposit other than the ones held by central and state governments, banks and few others such as RBI employees, pension and provident funds. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. Barter is a system of exchange by which goods or services are exchanged for other goods or services directly without using a medium of exchange, for example, money. Main functions of money are well known as a medium of exchange, a unit of account, a store of value and occasionally in the past a standard of deferred payment. Any sort of object or verifiable record that fulfills the mentioned functions can be considered as money. Money as a liquid store of value facilitates its holder, owner to buy any other asset at any time. It was Keynes who first realized the liquid store value of money function and regarded money as a connection between present and future. Though this does not imply that money is the most appropriate liquid store of value. An appropriate store of value, it should have a stable value. Token money is such money is in the nature of a token. A token is not of full value. Small coins as well as paper currency are token money. This is because the face value of the currency exceeds the built-in intrinsic value. Fiat money is a form or type of money that derives its value by government decree or law. It is different from commodity money. In other words, any type of money that made of precious metals like gold and silver are known as representative money or commodity money. Money supply is total amount of monetary assets accessible on hand in an economy at a particular point of time. 